Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Khashoyar Sadeghi. Uh, I'm the faculty member at Polytechnic University of St. Petersburg and uh, postdoc researcher at Polytechnic University of Milan. Uh, so um, uh, today we are going to talk about the application of artificial intelligence in nuclear engineering, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning in nuclear engineering. And I hope that this topic will help you to find uh, a good direction for your future education and uh, career. Uh, so first of all, before talking about the application of uh, artificial intelligence in nuclear uh, science and nuclear engineering, we should know the main directions of uh, nuclear engineering, how many different topics we have in nuclear um, uh, engineering that uh, artificial intelligence can be implemented on them. Uh, so, uh, the, you know, we have many different classification and different uh, directions, but uh, the most common is, uh, is demonstrated here in this slide. The first direction uh, is neutronic analysis of uh, reactor core. Uh, and uh, we have many different programs and code for uh, that. After that, thermal hydraulic analysis of reactor core. Of course, we can use artificial intelligence for both of them for neutronic analysis. We'll have, we'll talk about a case study of that today. Thermal hydraulic analysis of, uh, also is a very, um, um, very, very important topic for that. A safety of nuclear power plant uh, that I can tell you that this is the most important uh, part of nuclear engineering that uh, artificial intelligence can be implemented to that. So safety of nuclear uh, power plant, uh, analyzing different accidents, the local, LOFA, we are going to talk about them. Uh, thermomechanical evaluation of nuclear fuel, uh, also artificial intelligence or AI, uh, easily can be implemented uh, uh, to this topic for uh, different application, like for example, for uh, selecting the damaged fuel uh, and fuel assembly in the nuclear reactor or the other things. Shielding and physics of health, uh, of course, uh, AI really can help us in that field. And uh, finally, um, a very new topic, non-electrical application of nuclear power plant. I mean new, new topic, I mean application application of AI to the um, non-electrical application is very new and uh, you cannot find many uh, articles in that field in the literature and uh, I will give you some information about this uh, topic. So, uh, before talking about uh, application of AI in uh, different, uh, different fields like, uh, new, like, like uh, neutronic analyzer, thermal hydraulic analyzer or safety, uh, let's have a view on the uh, general scheme of uh, and different steps of um, application of AI on nuclear engineering. So we have, um, we should provide a, a data set for uh, our um, AI algorithm. Uh, and this data set can be produced uh, into two ways. One of them is using uh, some programs and codes and simulation. And the other one is some kind of um, uh, real, uh, real data set by experimental um, uh, tests and uh, process. So in nuclear power plant and nuclear reactor, uh, the first option, option, I mean using different codes for producing data set, is very common because um, testing different uh, process in nuclear reactor um, is not very uh, common and is not very available for our researchers. Uh, and producing data set from, uh, from uh, a real case is very, very uh, hard because, because of many different problems such as uh, cost and in addition the safety aspects of the test. So the first option is very common and um, if you find information in the internet, in the uh, journals, you can find, mostly you can find uh, the data set based on uh, simulation and uh, developed programs. So, by obtaining this data set, uh, we should train the uh, algorithm and by training this algorithm, uh, we can uh, model the, uh, um, we can, you know, we can uh, develop this algorithm and uh, use this algorithm for predicting the uh, different process in the uh, nuclear power plant. For example, you can predict the accident, you can predict the mass flux, you can predict the uh, temperature of the coolant in the reactor. And then you should evaluate this, uh, uh, let's say this, um, uh, uh, this uh, predicted, predicted number and predicted value. So when you evaluate it, you have uh, different methods for that. For example, MSE, uh, mean square error, and the other, uh, the other uh, criteria you can um, uh, select for your work. It depends on the type of the work. And then you will evaluate uh, the accuracy. If the accuracy is okay, then you can say that you have developed an AI model for uh, nuclear uh, engineering. 
So uh, the first um, case that we are going to talk about it is application of AI in um, um, nuclear analysis uh, and nuclear aspects of the reactor. Uh, in nuclear physics, uh, the most important goal is obtaining the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, neutron flux density and uh, the distribution of uh, neutrons in the reactor. So, uh, of course, we can use AI uh, for, um, for predicting the distribution of neutron in the uh, reactor. And, uh, you know, for obtaining the data set, we have many different methods. For example, we can use some codes for light water reactors. We can use uh, some program, uh, programs like VIMS, Citation, PARSE, or uh, sometimes we can use uh, Monte, Car Monte Carlo ap uh, approach for um, evaluating the uh, distribution of neutron in the reactor. And then we can produce a data set. And then by uh, training the uh, AI algorithm uh, with this data set, we can uh, start to predict the neutron distribution in the, uh, in the reactor. But it's not very easy that uh, I'm explaining you. It's, you should consider many, many different points. And uh, uh, you, know, uh, you should be professional in that to, uh, to get the best result from implementing AI to um, uh, physics of the reactor. So uh, here I have uh, uh, put a, a very good reference for, um, for let's say, uh, an overview of the use of AI in nuclear physics. In this uh, article, you can find uh, many different um, applications of AI for, um, let's say, for uh, nuclear physics. And uh, the, the, the uh, fundamental of this work is very clear. You should uh, perform some programs or obtain some data from experiments, and then uh, you should train your um, algorithm, uh, AI algorithm, and then you can predict your, uh, your uh, parameters and then evaluate the parameters. It's very, uh, you know, the, the, the um, fundamental is the same as uh, the other um, application of AI in the science, but uh, here you should consider many different points in uh, producing data set for training the AI algorithm. Uh, as a first case study, uh, I'm, gonna I'm going to talk about the article that is um, mentioned here, the application of neural network-based uh, deep learning method for uh, multidimensional neutron diffusion problem. Here in this slide, you can see the uh, neutron diffusion problem. And uh, this problem, this uh, equation is uh, really hard to be solved uh, and uh, because uh, you know, you have geometry, you have different materials, uh, you have cross section and everything. So uh, it's a little hard to solve this uh, equation by simple numerical methods. So what should you do? Uh, you will solve this equation one time forever and obtain a data set and then train your uh, algorithm, your AI algorithm by the produced data set. And uh, whenever you want to predict the neutron flux by this, uh, by this equation, you can use your uh, trained algorithm and you won't solve this equation anymore. So one time forever, you're going to solve this equation, obtain the data set and train your algorithm by this data set. In this article, they have you authors, they have used the uh, artificial neural network for that. Uh, and uh, you know, a very important um, difficulty in uh, nuclear physics is, uh, is uh, producing meshes in the uh, in the uh, mesh for ge geometry, I mean um, for uh, discreting the geometry. And uh, in this case, they have solved the uh, diffusion equation by use of method of uh, mesh-free uh, mesh free method. It means without any mesh, they have solved this, um, this equation. And it's a very, very good option because um, uh, we can give a very clear data set to the uh, AI algorithm. Uh, and they have used two main approach for this work. Uh, they have considered the boundary condition and they have not considered the uh, boundary condition, let's say boundary dependent method and boundary independent method. And uh, the results show that uh, boundary dependent method uh, based on a neural network gives uh, a very, very accurate uh, result for um, neutron flux that I told you neutron flux density is a very important um, parameter. Uh, in nuclear science, and if we can predict and obtain the value for neutron flux, it means that uh, you know we have uh, we, we have uh, done many many things for um, for designing a reactor. Uh, 
Uh, the most, the next important application of artificial intelligence is in safety analysis of nuclear power plants. So what is a safety? Uh, safety in a nuclear reactor means preventing any accidents uh, that uh, lead to, uh, let's say, emitting uh, radioactive material to the environment. So uh, in order to prevent any accidents in the nuclear power plant, we should consider many different parameters and uh, we should have uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, scenarios for that. Um, so first of all, we should uh, prevent this accident. It means that we should design the reactor in a way that never we won't have any accident. But of course, sometimes we have some anticipated operational uh, accidents and we cannot, uh, you know, uh, prevent them. So we should think about them before designing the nuclear reactor and we should have some scenarios for controlling the accident uh, in this uh, situation. After that, we should co um, control the uh, accident and sometimes we, uh, the accident will be progressed. So, um, uh, we have um, uh, uh, emission of radioactive material and uh, this kind of uh, accident is called a severe accident and we should prevent severe accidents. Severe accidents like, for example, Chernobyl or Fukushima, they are uh, two important examples of severe accident. And finally, if you cannot control anything, if you cannot control the accident, you have to um, mitigate the consequence of the accident. So it's very important, you can see that it's very important to prevent any accident in order to get to the severe accident. If you want to prevent any accident, we should predict the accident in the first phase of the accident. For example, in two seconds, three seconds, ten seconds, we should predict the accident and we should, uh, let's say, um, think about it and uh, let's say we should uh, try to uh, stop this uh, accident. Artificial intelligence is a very good tool for uh, this, um, uh, this uh, problem. I mean, uh, using the AI, we can predict some accidents in the reactor in a very, very short time, in two seconds, three seconds. Uh, and it can help the operator to avoid, to, to make the best decision. You know that in the nuclear reactor, nuclear power plant, we have a control room and the operators usually sit there to control everything. And uh, sometimes when you have an accident, you will have many, many, many uh, different alarms uh, and you know, you will get confused. What should you do now? Of course, computer can help you, but uh, the uh, last decision will be taken by the operator and uh, AI can help this operator to make the best decision in a very, very short time. Uh, here in this case, I have provided an article for you, the accident uh, detection of a PWR fuel pin during unprotected loose of flow accident. We have many different types of accident. The most important accident in the reactor is loose of uh, flow accident or LOFA and uh, loose of coolant accident or LOFA. So in this case, they have considered a, lo a LOFA accident for a PWR reactor and uh, it is a very fast uh, accident. It means that in a very short time you will lose your uh, flow. It means uh, you have failure in uh, nuclear pumps and uh, then uh, the mass flow rate of the reactor will be decreased. And uh, it is unprotected, means that uh, you cannot uh, scram the reactor and shut down the reactor in a very, very short uh, interval of time. So uh, in this case, they have developed uh, a model for uh, training the data set. Of course, they don't have any experimental test. Uh, so they have used some program for um, simulation of the reactor. Uh, the input parameter here is mass flow rate and the output parameter is the temperature of the reactor. So by using or solving energy, mass, energy and momentum equations, uh, they could obtain the uh, outlet temperature of the reactor. It is uh, the method of accident analysis and is very common. But in artificial intelligence, uh, you want to know uh, the mass flow rate by using temperature. So you have uh, an algorithm, you should train it by obtaining a temperature from um, accident analysis that is obtained from the uh, mass energy momentum uh, equations. And then uh, by training this algorithm, you can uh, obtain the mass flow rate. So uh, in this case, you can see in this slide, uh, they have um, developed uh, many different scenarios for uh, for um, um, this low for accident from 100% mass flow rate is reduced to 3%. As you can see, the temperature will be increased step by step. And this is a, this is a tra uh, 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 transient uh, process, uh, not a steady state. So in transient process, of course, everything is more complicated. Uh, and they have trained their um, algorithm, uh, their algorithm support vector matching. They have developed their algorithm, AI algorithm, by this uh, data set. And uh, the results show that um, uh, the, uh, in, in uh, less than one second, they have uh, detected the accident with a very, very high uh, accuracy. And you can see that uh, it's almost equal to 
uh, one when we use 20% uh, of the data set for training. And it means that uh, in the first, uh, uh, first phase of the or uh, initial phase of the accident, we could uh, predict the uh, accident. Another, um, another example or case is, the, is uh, developing some uh, correlation for fast and protected LOFA accident for VVR1000. Um, again, in this case, uh, we have uh, developed uh, a method, a numerical method for obtaining the data set. This numerical method is based on a single heated channel, a, a, a thermal hydraulic analysis of the nuclear reactor, and we could obtain the um, the outlet uh, temperature from the reactor. After that, uh, we gave the obtained data set to the uh, to the gen expression programming. That is a, a method for sy symbolic regression. A very new, not a very new, a very um, uh, powerful uh, method of uh, symbolic regression of artificial intelligence. And from this um, method, uh, we can obtain a correlation. Uh, for um, for estimating the uh, mass failure rate some second or some millisecond after uh, fast and unprotected low for accident uh, in this case you can see the general algorithm for this um, uh, for this um, article uh, first of all mass energy and momentum equation they have been solved using the single heated channel and the numerical methods then uh, we have produced a data set then uh, we should uh, you know, we have um, many different scenarios for reducing the mass flow rate and uh, we can obtain a very clean and uh, clear um, uh, data set. Then we train the gen expression programming algorithm by this obtained uh, data set. Um, and uh, gen expression programming can give us several uh, formulas and correlation, as you can see here in this slide, uh, for different time steps. It's very important for different time steps. Uh, a non-dimensional uh, equation can be obtained. And you can see that at the right side of this equation, this uh, slide, you can see the uh, coefficient of uh, determination is a measurement of uh, uh, error. And you can see it's very, very uh, accurate, uh, greater than 96%. We could uh, detect the low for fast and unprotected low for accident using the uh, obtained correlations from gen expression programming. Uh, finally, uh, today we want to talk about the application of AI in techno-economic evaluation of um, nuclear seawater desalination. Nuclear seawater desalination is a kind of uh, application of cogeneration plan. Here you can see that we extract steel from turbine and we give it to the, um, uh, to the um, uh, intermediate loom, the red one, number eight, and uh, number eight heat exchanger, intermediate heat exchanger is connected to the seawater desalination, thermal seawater desalination. And um, of course, techno-economic evaluation here is very important. We should use many different methods, but uh, we can use a general algorithm for obtaining a data set one time forever. And then we uh, develop some uh, program, some, let's say, some formulas and correlation for estimating the cost of the final cost of water um, uh, using the nuclear energy. So uh, in this slide, you can see the general algorithm for that. First of all, we should uh, develop a program for um, techno economic evaluation of nuclear desalination plan and obtain a data set for different parameters. For, uh, you know, we have many, many different parameters like uh, economic parameters, like discount rate, interest rate, um, lead time of the reactor, of the um, desalination plan. And also we have some technical parameter, like for example, um, uh, power loss ratio of the uh, nuclear power plant, which is combined to the um, uh, seawater desalination plant. So we should consider all these parameters, we should change them. Then we should perform a sensitivity analyze, it's very important. We should pick up only the most important parameters that they have the maximum um, effect on the total cost of the water. So uh, after a sensitivity analyze, uh, we should give this data set to the gen expression programming technique uh, or, or algorithm. And um, in gen expression programming, uh, we can produce a general correlation for obtaining the cost for different uh, cases. And uh, in this slide, you can see uh, the correlation for um, let's say for uh, three different components of costs, uh, I mean um, uh, operating and maintenance costs, capital costs, and uh, energy costs. And one time forever, you will use this um, correlation and you can easily can estimate the cost of the water from nuclear, um, nuclear uh, power plant. And you can see in the right side of the slide the accuracy of the 
uh, obtain a result, the accuracy is very high, uh, greater uh, than 95, 96%. So it means that uh, by using artificial intelligence, you easily you can uh, predict the cost of the uh, water using nuclear energy. Uh, finally, I want to tell you about the Center of Nuclear Advanced Technologies for Sustainable Development and Energy Decarbonization that is opened in um, uh, Polytechnic University of St. Petersburg in 2022. Uh, and we are researchers, they are working on that. I'm one of the co-founder of, co, co, um, um, co of this uh, center. And uh, uh, especially, particularly, we are working on um, nuclear desalination plan and art ap application of artificial intelligence in different fields of um, nuclear desalination plan. Uh, and um, you know, we have many different uh, publications in, in that field. And I think that it's, it would be a very good uh, direction for your future education and for your future uh, career uh, if you are interested in that. Thank you very much. I hope that you gain enough information about this topic uh, and have a good day.